Joe Rogan actually talked about this, sort of. Said he used to hate feet, then started dating a girl who gave him foot jobs. Started associating feet with sexual gratification. Now he's into feet. Where was she rubbing her feet My on you? Dick. My dick, son. No, I mean, like... <laughs> All I got from this is that Joe Rogan likes feet. It's not the trend, it's the porn addiction. Pretty sure it's the trend. So, I think it's both, to be honest. Um, there are other posts, like this one. How many of us are on trend? Serious question. There's been a lot of hilarious posts lately, like... I took trend, now I want to be pegged type posts, but I'm not as many, I'm sure not as many people are on trend as the subreddit makes it seem. I've got two vials on order now because I'm an idiot. Rest assured, I will be eating ass and getting paid in the next couple of weeks. What's up guys, Derek, moreplacemoredates.com. The highly anticipated video is finally here. DECA making people into cuckolds as well as Trenbolone perhaps, which we're going to be <laughs> digging into soon. So I don't even remember how I came across this, but it's on my to-do list for a minute now. Basically throughout the years, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, like feedback on, you know, the bodybuilding boards, the anabolic boards about you know, like anecdotal response to different types of cycles, you know, different compounds. And in general, an overlapping theme you see with the 19 nors is mental side effects. Now, DHT derivatives in general are pretty fucking benign in most cases in terms of they just make you have like more libido, make you a bit more aggressive, give you a bit more, I don't know, like oomph, <laughs> so to speak. But 19 nors, these are the compounds that are Highly progestogenic. They are, you know, the like nandrolone being the base 19 nor testosterone parent compound that they're all derived from. So the molecular um, alterations to create things like trenbolone, to create things like trestolone, to create things like uh, um, norbolethone, to create things like steranabol, um, oxabolone, like some of these compounds that are ultimately uh, derived from nandrolone do have some interesting mental sides from a, and like they're known as relationship killers, some of them, most notably trenbolone being the one that is like, don't fucking use this if you have a girlfriend and if you do, like warn her about it ahead of time kind of thing. So this is one of the notable ones that uh, I somehow stumbled across by bench press 315. So this thread is basically just a thread about um, stacking testosterone with DECA. So as you can see here, uh, let's see, for those unaware, each week we have a specific steroid up for discussion. Stuff to discuss would be benefits and gains, side effects, details of the cycle, etc. what the thread isn't for, general questions, spitballing your next cycle, non-constructive criticism. This week's compound is stacking test with nandrolone. So not nandrolone solo, not test uh, like literally test stacked with uh, nandrolone specifically. So bench press 315 is an individual who ran 500 tests, 700 de nandrolone decanoate, 700 master on, um, and on 25 milligrams of anadrol on harder training days once or twice per week, some MK677 and proviron. Now this is obviously a smorgasbord, short, <laughs> fucking smorgasbord of stuff but he says he went from a natty 160 to a bulked up 195 tank after the cycle. Nandrolone decanoate definitely gave me a look which resembled the definition of the word swole. Nothing put weight on me faster and gives me a full balloon thick like look, much of which is likely water. So again, is Nandrolone like a watery compound? Like it's seen as that oftentimes. Like when you think of bulking agents, you're like, okay, we got like D-Ball, we've got Anadrol, we've got DECA. Like these are the fluffy fucking, you know, Michelin man compounds. And in some cases they can be for sure. But again, there's context here. What's the diet like? Are you in a surplus? Are you in a fucking dirty surplus? Are you using it with a shit ton of tests concurrently? Because again, a lot of the time these progestogenic compounds do seem to be a bit more problematic when you have a shit ton of tests in the system. Now, I'm not saying you should do like a high fucking DECA zero test or, you know, no, like a DECA only cycle or anything. I'm not saying that's, again, take what I'm saying with context here, because there are situations that justify the choices of even like some things that seem really weird, you know, people running like nearly no test or no test concurrently with DECA in some scenarios, you know, can be pretty advantageous for certain individuals' goals. 
And then other individuals, they use you know a certain amount of tests to feel good on DECA because they otherwise have low estrogen or they feel a lack of like androgenicity slash drive. But oftentimes something you see is individuals who have like a decent fucking dose of test or like a shit ton of test with a shit ton of DECA. Like these are the individual individuals who end up like really bloating up aggressively and are the ones who are often reporting issues of DECA dick and whatnot. So again, you know, there's some individuals who say you have to double the test the test dose, needs, test dose needs to be double the decadose, dose or else it's, you're gonna get decadic. And again, like ultimately at the end of the day, it's basically just competing for the androgen receptor, competing for aromatase, progestogenic activity lapped on top of the estrogenic activity of the test and where your fine line of where you're gonna get fucked over with some sort of side effect profile is, is going to be dependent on a myriad of factors, but ultimately like blaming one compound or the other, like in general, again, like even prolactin when estrogen is significantly elevated, having parallel activity with it there are a lot of things that are multifactorial it's not just like one compound fucked up the thing like oftentimes when you have side effects compounded like this from you know nandrolo necessarily they can come as a result of the mismanagement and or poor selection of the other compounds you're using or the you know poor selection of the dose of deca for your own personal situation Ultimately, you have to understand this is like polypharmacy here and there's different, you know, compounds being lapped on top of each other. So it's kind of hard to say for certain this exactly did this. But in general, you know, with a lot of fucking rambling, what we do see is the progestogenic activity on top of fucking test in general seems to be relatively problematic in comparison to test on its own from a mental standpoint for some individuals. So anyways. He went to a bull, full balloon, thick like look, much, much of which is likely water, which obviously is going to be contributed to heavily with these in unison at these dosage burdens with your 25 Anadrol, with your fucking MK. I know I was running droll alongside, but I attributed much of the front to back thickness I attained to the Nandrolone, while the Anadrol gave me huge pumped up shoulders, chest, and arms. The mental side effects were too were much too real on DECA, which is why I dropped it early before reaching 16 weeks. So this is where people notice like a blatant shift in their mental state and the way they perceive, especially relationships and their interactions with women. Like others have said, it made me obsessed. So yeah, this guy's talking about, it made him obsessed about girls sleeping with other guys to the point that that's all I was thinking about, all I was getting off to and getting off to intensely, I might add. Apparently, Tren is to trannies as Nand is to cuckolding. Nand gave uncontrollable anxiety all the time, but I get bad mental sides from most compounds, including even a low dose of Tren or Anandrol. So now I stick to only test, Primo, and Anavar for, my, for myself personally. So again, going back to the most benign compounds and like the most well tolerated, fucking time and time again, test, Primo, Anavar. These are compounds that are very refined they're derived from dht and now they might not necessarily be the most fucking hair safe in all aspects you know anivar obviously you know a bit different than primo in that regard and obviously test is you know the fucking worst but i mean in some circumstances depending on the context but i mean in general like the highly refined dht derivatives from like a mental standpoint are going to be in general very, very well tolerated relative to things like Tren, things like Anadrol, thing like again, Anadrol is DHT derived technically, even though it acts more like a progestogenic 19 nor. Um, things like Nandrolone with test, kind of problematic for some individuals. Libido remained very high, too high throughout the cycle. I attribute this to how my body reacts to Masteron. The second time I ran Nandrolone, I ran the NPP version, test, one and a half grams a week. Damn son, Mastron, 250 per week. EQ, 1.3 grams per week. NPP, 400 milligrams per week. This cycle was just stupid. The blood pressure gains, headaches, body aches, and sleep apnea made day-to-day -day life near unbearable. Libido was sky high, probably due to the test. Was in constant brain fog mode, but no anxiety-like symptoms like from the previous run of 700 milligrams DECA. I don't know if this was due to the change in ester because Nandrolone was run at almost half the dose or if it was because DEC test was ran at so much higher of a ratio. So again, this was kind of like, I don't remember how exactly I stumbled across this, but it kind of like brought up an array of different similar anecdotes. So this was um, talking about the compound Andrew and Decanoate, NPP, <laughs> made me a cuck LMAO. I probably won't run it again because of the mental sides. Besides jealousy in your relationship, any other mental sides, that is specific enough that maybe there were some other reasons related to that relationship or something you were going through that brought up those feelings outside of the deck. Hard to isolate, of course. 
Other guys on here have said the same thing about Nandrolone. One of my mates who tried DECA in real life had the same experience. It could be a general anxiety thing, but nothing had changed in the relationship and the thought stopped as soon as I stopped the NPP. I've heard so many guys say this about DECA. They all start tripping, thinking their GF is screwing other guys or did in the past. Almost sounds worse than Trent. That it almost ended a relationship because it made me want to bone everyone I saw. With Trent, you're screwing with other guys. Um, talking about here, Nandrolones and other 19 Nors have progesterone mimicking actions, especially if they have a long, bulky alkyl group at the C17 position. Progestins are shown to have a strong relation between homosexuality. Check the mechanism of action and adverse effects in the progesterone Wikipedia page. I know Wikipedia is not reliable, but it has referenced the study. So talking about that, I did a video recently called Trend Turned Him Homosexual. This was uh, relatively well received and it was about a similar thread asking quite literally, why the fuck is Trend turning me homosexual? This guy was talking about how it's making him wanna Suck dick 24 seven. I'm pretty sure it was, uh, you, can, you can just watch the video if you wanna see the rest. But basically in here, I actually go through some of the literature that outlines the kind of interactions with progesterone on these kinds of tendencies, I guess. And in it, you can actually dig into some of the, or extrapolate what may be causing the, uh, I don't know, some of the stuff you see <laughs> Some of the stuff you see when it comes to uh, nandrolone use and trenbolone use. Actually, maybe this wasn't even the original one because I'm kind of flipping through here. Maybe this is me referring to the time I did that post, but I did a post um, outlining, or actually maybe it was. You know, I talked about it for fucking 20 minutes here. I'm pretty sure I did, I did reference those studies. But basically, studies do indicate that progestogenic activity does have a significant overlap with this. And it's not surprising that individuals who are using, like again, think about how much progesterone you're producing endogenously. And then when you're using a fucking like half gram dose of trenbolone or nandrolone on top of your test, which is already highly energetic and is driving your, your fucking sympathetic nervous system into overdrive, your fight or flight's like constantly redlined. You're just feeling like heightened level of alertness all the fucking time. Your every system in your body is essentially like peaked in terms of an aggression context, perhaps libido context, like everything in your brain from a like free androgen stimulating aspect is just like redlined. Then you add on a fat layer of fucking progestogenic activity on top of it. And you end up with like a little cocktail of brain chemistry manipulation that ends up with a little bit of interesting behavior in some cases. And oftentimes you hear individuals talking about either becoming jealous, like unnecessarily, or just like for no justified reason whatsoever, becoming very, very like suspicious of their girlfriend's actions or like if she's loyal or whatever, um, be, like the cuckold tech tendencies or just like becoming a uh, like bi or like homosexual. And that's what we're going to get into in this one. Started trend, don't know what to jerk off to anymore. My last trend cycle made me ridiculously horny, including this one. Give me all the shit you want, but my kink, <laughs> This guy, Jack Attack 77. Kink is cuckold stuff, but now I don't have a girlfriend to do that with. I went too far down the rabbit hole with my kink in my last relationship. We broke up. Now I don't know what the jerk <laughs> jerk it to anymore. Porn doesn't work. Actual sex with other girls doesn't work. Looking at old videos doesn't work. What do? I recently slept with a girl I met from Tinder. Straight up, could not ejaculate. The sex was fun. I could get turned on, but I just couldn't get turned on, on enough to make it to the finish line. Finish line. Stop reporting this post. For, um, okay, I don't, I don't know if this would fucking flag this video, so I'm just skipping reading this, but um, let's see. So basically, this is what, you know, when I hear something like this, could not ejaculate with a girl I met from Tinder, sex was fun, I could get turned on, but couldn't make it to the finish line, stuff like that, porn doesn't work. Like this guy is like exhausted his resources and his brain is essentially just like a mushed up, fucking abused system of nothingness at this point. It's just absolutely been redlined to the absolute limit of probably the most fucked up porn you can find on the internet. And it's so desensitized that literal attractive women do not do it for them anymore. And porn doesn't even work at this point. So you can imagine this is the main problem I see and I think leads to some of these tendencies too. I don't just think it's the progestogenic activity. I think it's also the libido gets so high of guys on gear and especially some guys react poorly to uh, DECA from a libido aspect, but some people get a significantly heightened libido. And on trend, a lot of individuals get like, like fucking next level libidos. 
to the point where they're just yanking it all goddamn day. And when they're yanking it all goddamn day, their brain is naturally evolving. It's almost like progressive overloading their porn where it's like something that used to work. Their dick is essentially like, just like perma fucking horny at this point. And it almost is like, just perpetually yanking the chain like all goddamn day and they end up watching progressively worse and more extreme stuff or odd stuff that is like very very uncharacteristic of what they would normally watch and they almost need to do that to get their brain to like the next level of stimulation to actually be able to get off again so they end up in this point started trying don't even know what to jerk off to anymore if the entire fucking internet of pornography and it just doesn't work anymore. Like you have the entire internet of everything that humans have ever discovered about like sexual activity with like the most attractive women doing the most fucked up shit ever. Even, like who, there's tons of shit on the internet, bro. And some of these people end up watching like really fucked up stuff. And the fact that nothing works at this point, like this is where you gotta do a full like reset. Like this is not just, oh, like what do I, I don't get what's wrong with me. It's like, bro, you've literally just, fucking spank the monkey far too many times and you gotta like block yourself from getting into pornography or something like fucking i don't know set up one of those apps there's definitely like plugins that like prevent you from watching porn sites i'm pretty sure but this kind of an individual as hard as it is lay off the porn for a week maybe more you can get back to baseline this is the best advice i remember being super desensitized then got deployed didn't have access to anything for three months when i came back i was getting turned on by fucking gatorade commercials dude has progressive overloaded his nut by overexposure to increasingly intense stimuli um lol can relate the amount of porn i consumed before i enlisted desensitized me to sex a six month osut cycle squared me away Lay off the porn one while on trend. Not gonna be an easy task, LOL. So yeah, many have failed the no fap challenge while on trend blown. Pretty fucking difficult. And if you could do it, you're a savage. But again, you gotta be careful with this shit. Like not just the fact that trend blown itself is like going to fuck with your mental state a bit, but you start getting in deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole of weird stuff to the point that you'll literally like wreck your relationship with your girlfriend because she thinks you like hate having sex with her because you're just like, your dick doesn't even stay hard. You're like not really into it. You can't get off for the life of you. Um, and even if you are into it, you're like getting into weird shit and like bringing up really odd stuff potentially to try and satisfy this like never ending crusade to find the next level of mental stimulation to like scratch your fucking never ending itch. And it's a bad, bad, vicious circle. And even while the person's doing this, it's like they're fucking paranoid in their head that their girlfriend's cheating on them at the same time. Even while she's agreeing to do this like weird shit. Like here's another thread. Trend and homosexual desires. Obviously this has been covered in a video before, but I'm experiencing the same thing. So this is a different guy. I don't watch porn. I'm married and have a very active sex life. Five weeks into trend starts having bisexual homo thoughts. <laughs> Next line, wife buys a strap on, pegs him, and he says he's super into it. He sucked it, he gagged on it, and everything. He also made out with a guy once when he was hammered, but never thought about it again until Trent. He's not homo, is the disclaimer. Um, top troll. Oh, he's topped all right. Nah, he's definitely a bottom. Pegged. Man, Trent has whacked out shit to people's sexual de desires. I was just on a post where a dude says Trent got him into cucking. And a bunch of people agreed that they also got into sharing their wives after taking Trent. I'm just a weirdo on the internet, so don't take my word to mean anything, but here's a theory. You not being attracted to men necessarily, you may just be attracted to the taboo-ness of it. Trend can make people insatiable sexually where no degree of kinkiness or sex is enough and they're always craving a more extreme sexual experience. Think of nymphomania where people just go increasingly extreme in their sexual endeavors because they're never satisfied. Swapping, homosexual encounters, prostitutes, etc. are all pretty common among the hypersexual or enhanced. I know people who have paid for prostitutes not because they can't get laid, but because they're attracted, attracted to the taboo nature of prostitution. So take that with a grain of salt. Again, I know nothing about you or anything else, but you may be experiencing the attraction to more extreme sexual acts for the sake of their extremity. P.S. You may also be pavloving yourself. If you're thinking about sex with men while having sex with your wife, you're going to be pairing a positive experience, ejaculation with a neutral stimuli, homosexual acts, and building an association where homosexual thoughts are arousing. Joe Rogan actually talked about this, sort of. Said he used to hate feet, then started dating a girl who gave him foot jobs. Started associating feet with sexual gratification. Now he's into feet. There's a girl that I dated when I was in high school, and she, she was into like rubbing her feet on me. And I had a foot thing for Ooh, a long time yeah. afterwards because of it. What? Where was she rubbing her feet My on you? My dick. My dick, son. No, I mean like... <laughs> 
<laughs> I figured that. I meant like, were you at your house? Were you at no. school? Yeah, were well, whatever. She would just rub her feet on my legs and put her feet on my dick. your girlfriend? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All I got from this is that Joe Rogan likes feet. It's not the trend, it's the porn addiction. Pretty sure it's the trend. So I think it's both, to be honest. Um, there are other posts, like this one. How many of us are on trend? Serious question. There's been a lot of hilarious posts lately, like, I took trend, now I want to be pegged type posts. But I'm not as many, <laughs> I'm sure not as many people are on trend as the subreddit makes it seem. I've got two vials on order now because I'm an idiot. Rest assured, I will be eating ass and getting pegged <laughs> in the next couple of weeks. If you have a girlfriend, warn her you might try to break up with her in the next coming weeks. It's not just being a sexual deviant. Lots of people get paranoid, anxious, and end up breaking things off in a fit of paranoia slash anger. It's not a guarantee to happen, but you never know where your mind state will be in the coming weeks like you mentioned. Thanks for the advice. I've used it once before last year and felt great. No major fuck-ups, no Tinder downloads, no cheating, no racism, <laughs> no combot designs. <laughs> so you haven't seen the combot video. That was a good one too. Dosage and Esther. Uh, Trenny, uh, let's see, the fuck? I was intending to try Trent on my cut next year. This comment got me worried, but this link kind of settled it. All right, what is the link? The genotoxicity of Trent Balloon, a synthetic steroid. Okay, so looking at a cell-based assay, got it. There are other studies that show the contrary in other mammals. There are a lot of studies in like rodent and like cell culture data that would imply like the, it's really easy to find like weird data on fucking anabolics when you're looking at rodents. Just like you could find data on rodents that show like ARBs, like totally fucking eliminate any kind of cardiovascular risk from high doses of gear. When in reality, like there's obviously, it seems like rodents are just like hyper fucking responders to like everything from a bad and like a, you know, potentially a good aspect too. It's kind of wild. Um, Pete Rubish once said that Trenny is like Pez candy compared to Trenny's. I remember that video. That was the fucking OG trend viral video also ace is arguably better because the ester is so short if you start getting bad sides you don't have to wait a week or two for it to exit your system painting that much sucks though so i get the appeal of an antate and so anecdotally i always found acetate to um induce the trend cough easier seemingly but i would uh definitely agree if you are going to do this stuff trend specifically it you would be much better off using a short ester in case you encounter some side effects that are otherwise undesirable because if you have an acetate versus an enanthate, you're looking at a multiple fold higher clearance time where you're going to be exposed to the same kind of side effects. Like imagine you end up in a scenario where you want to be pegged all of a sudden all the time and or you end up with, you know, wrecking your fucking sleep or, you know, from brutal night sweats or you end up in a brutal like paranoid slash volatile state that is fucking up your relationship, getting acetate out of your system is a lot easier than an anthate. So despite the allure of minimal pinning with an anthate relative to the frequency of acetates, I would definitely recommend acetate. And frankly, even if you're using an anthate for more stable blood serum concentrations, like the more frequent, the better, frankly, um, as annoying as it is. So anyways, be careful with this shit. I don't think a lot of people, people think it's like a joke, and yet it sort of is, but at the same time, there is some truth to a lot of these anecdotal reports that have accumulated. Like, I think it's a combination of the actual inherent progestogenic activity of the drug. I think a lot of it is the hyper enhanced sex drive and the ridiculous consum overconsumption of pornography and the just like progressively overloading like sexual extremist type, you know, Always trying to push the envelope because you're just perpetually horny. Like when you do your first trend run, you can literally yank it like fucking seven, eight times a day like nothing, dude. Yeah, it's that fucked up. So anyways, that's the video. If you have a similar experience that you are willing to share, you know, anonymously or whatever, um, drop it in the comments. They're all much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog. And if you didn't have these experiences, you know, drop it down too. All of the comments and feedback helps uh, drive the algorithm. And it's obviously, you know, interesting to read through this shit. Um, and it may otherwise, you know, steer somebody clear from doing it who is otherwise going to hop on the bandwagon, who may otherwise, you know, benefit from not doing it at all, or could pick something more benign and tolerable um, because they may not need this shit. Like, are you stepping on stage? Like, what are you doing? So anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm. Much appreciated. Like, subscribe. Check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplacemoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with. In the video description below, my TRT clinic, all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home, get high quality oversight from doctors who represent the most 
cutting edge in recent literature when it comes to endocrinology, bi uh, biology, pharmacology in this space and um, get high quality proactive preventative medicine oversight, um, especially if you're involving yourself with this kind of shit. As well, Gorilla Mind, nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode pre-workout formulas. I designed myself from scratch. My recommended diet model for gaining muscle, sports performance, clothing company that sponsors me, as well as anything else that supports me. It's all down in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.